Good morning! Welcome to the YouTube channel of the Bitcoin family. From the newcomers, guys, my name is Didi Taihutu. Yes, you might recognize me. I am the guy that went all in three years ago. So we sold our house, our companies, everything we had as a family. We went all into Bitcoin and started traveling the world. Now, three years later, it's coming to you from Venlo, my hometown where I'm visiting family. This weekend, I spent a whole weekend with family. We had a huge party for my grandma because she turned 85. We had a huge party of my nephew because he turned 33 so in those two days i met the complete family and we had some drinks as you can see again in my small eyes today's video is going to be a little bit different because i'm going to use the video i recorded this morning early already at eight o'clock with sean and lisa i'm going to post this video today so i can finally start my new concept so i can give you these videos in the morning every day with your cup of coffee in this video with sean we're going to talk about the bitcoin price what to expect we're going to talk about ethereum what to expect we're going to talk about two amazing alls what to expect we are also going to talk about aliens joe rogan i think lisa was talking about huge green dildos and many other things it's a cool video it's a long video it's like two hours so i'm not going to blame you if you don't watch the whole video but believe me the video is packed full with cool information about bitcoin ethereum and many other trades but also about the true fundamentals and how now possibly the banks are trying to grab the power in bitcoin by something that happened last week enjoy all the humor and discussions between me sean and lisa Welcome to your Monday happy place Hi. with Lisa and Dee Dee. Hi. Hi. Happy, happy long time. Happy, happy long time. No, me love you long time. Five dollar. Me love you long time. Only five dollar. I fly now to you. Okay. <laughs> we've, we've immediately set the tone for uh, today's show. Very good people. We, we will be looking at some charts as well as having some uh, <coughs> bit of fun and uh, a general chat. Uh, what a week, huh? What a week. Yeah. Hey, Didi, you want a happy ending? $1,000. <laughs> I can pay the happy ending now because Bitcoin went up $1,000. <laughs> <It did. laughs> that is right. See, Sean's like, where the hell am I going with this? And it's like, wow, it's all planned. <laughs> One big green candle. <laughs> you love me long time, Green Candle. Well, you two are you two are clearly very excited because there's finally been some chart action in uh, in Bitcoin and Ethereum. I just was there? I had two two charts that I, I had for BTC, and I'm just very happy I didn't have to put the other chart up saying that I got it wrong. Where <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, Whoa! got it right. <laughs> Okay, so today, folks, we're going to uh, have a close look at what is, in fact, happening with Bitcoin and Ethereum. And then I think uh, second half of the show, we'll have more of a, a general chat on the absolute madness and hype that has also uh, clearly hit the space when I'm seeing people advertising Telegram groups for $2,000 just to join the damn group. I, I so, really think it's the aliens. It's all the aliens that have oh, landed yes. and they've come in and they want our Bitcoin. We will be talking about aliens in the second half of the show as well. So stay tuned. <laughs> <laughs> First stop. let's look at some charts. All right, let's share some charts. <laughs> it helps if I'm on the charts. Oh God, I enable screen share and you, you can't, oh, here we go. Dun, dun, oh, dun. She, was still, she, was still, she was still watching the aliens. <laughs> well, yeah, that's it. I was still watching Joe Rogan talk about <laughs> aliens. So, okay. So this is me. I'm Lisa and I'm in a long I'm and Lisa. I'm very happy because me love you long time. <laughs> I'm going to put that on my charts. Um, so this is my whale and the reason my whale you know, and Moby, he's been a dick. He's been baiting the bears. He's like, we've we've had a couple of dropouts out of the channel where the bears would have been like, whoa! 
and then like, no! So, yeah, that's kind of how the bands have been going. And um, so right now, BTC is moving up on their tiers. We can see that we've got not a lot of volume coming into the market. Uh, we've, we've had quite a bit of volume, but there's certain regions that people will have stops if they're in shorts. Uh, and the, these are getting hit, obviously. So we're at our next resistance. And um, yeah, so we sh if we're gonna correct here, which probably we won't see a lot of corrections in this area, um, just due to the fact that the FOMO will be starting to kick in because all the bears were shorting at, you know, sort of the high nines saying, BTC is going to seven. And I'm just like, BTC is not going to seven. BTC is going to 11 here. So we are going to see a push up to bullish pivot. So this, this whole pattern, and this is the $2,000 candle pattern. So I think, um, you know, while it doesn't appear that it's going to come in one candle, it still could. It still, we still could get quite a huge candle coming up and you know, we are going to keep going. So um, we, we're going to hit around this range. We'll probably see a, a sort of a correction within this period sort of range here. And then we will continue up. So if I go to the chart that I had up last week, which was a Binance chart, which I was showing um, that this also, we had the, the four lower highs, high lows, here I'm going backwards, the four higher lows as we went here. And the reason I believed that we were going up was we had the four higher lows in this region as well. So that's uh, what we've seen. So I've put on the waves in this region and we can see that we're in this, this fifth wave. So at this point here, which is about 11,000, sort of maybe 800-ish, um, we will get a, a, a deeper correction, which I think, depending on FOMO, so we're going to have the FOMO kicking in, but at this point, exchanges and whales are going to want to take some profit. So that's when we see these uh, big, big candles that instantaneously go down. So um, Arthur Hayes has tweeted, a few tweets and I always love his tweets because um, I like to analyze them because I think they're very cryptic and you know he puts a lot of thought into these things and I have um, you know sort of worked out that a lot of his tweets have something to do with how he's trading or how the market's going. Um, he put a Scrooge McDuck um, quote up now Scrooge McDuck is, is closely tied with a lot of the stuff that Warren Buffett says. And um, even though he's a 19 sort of 50s cartoon, uh, there's a lot of parallels to Warren Buffett. And one of them is about not over leveraging. So he's, he's tweeted today uh, that he's going to Scrooge, he's going Scrooge McDuck on this. So, which means that uh, the whale is gonna play and that anyone who's over leveraged is going to lose. And that's what that tweet means to me. So I, I truly believe that if you're going to over leverage BTC and you know, they're gonna, the whales are gonna start taking it down. So, and it's going to move really quickly. So once we get to these upper levels and these correction points, it's going to, you know, potentially once we get to uh, this third wave correction point, which is about 10, sort of 800 ish, we could take a, you know, a thousand dollar drop at this point and then continue back up. So these, these are the possibilities within the Elliott wave. So the wave, um, the fourth wave down normally sort of comes in level with the first wave. It can in a leveraged market cross by a wick on a higher time frame, which is a 12 to a 24 hour or a daily chart. So when we're looking at that, we've got that crossover and we've got that thousand dollar drop. So if the exchanges, you know, people like Arthur Hayes who might be trading decide to take profit, then they're going to market sell this. They're still going to be in, in massive amounts of profit. And then, you know, 
all of these people waiting down lower because their orders didn't get filled, you know, are going to get filled and BTC is going to continue up. So this is the game that they play. So, you know, and then you're going to see all of the people like we did yesterday, Twitter went incredibly quiet when we started going up because obviously everyone was telling me how we were going down and we didn't go down, we continued up. That's why we follow because... you, Lisa. <laughs> so, yeah, it just it's just, you know, the overall sort of, and I, I've said this before, that I have this theory that the way to get crypto noticed right now in this current climate is to push the price up. So, you know, the way to, um, to build adoption is through the price rising. And, and that's, that's happening again. And, you know, more people I've noticed over the last month, more people are asking me about crypto, more people are asking me how, I, how to buy crypto. You know, we've got people buying crypto on their credit cards again. Every exchange offers that. So, you know, I, I think we're going to see that sort of influx of money coming into the market again. Um, the, the market cap has gone up massively. So we haven't hit our, our highs, but we... Uh... On, that, on that note, people, there are three videos on this channel for all these people that are calling me and asking me about DeFi coins. I've made some videos. Uh, very easy to follow. That's how you can get them. So please watch those before you contact me. Anyway, <laughs> back, back to you, Lisa. You're right, though. <coughs> this this feels too seven in. I'm I'm getting a flood of interest. Yeah. So I'm just going to bring up the crypto market cap, and um, we can see that we've had a, a massive rise. We're at a. It's not going to load now. Um, being slow. If it ever loads, we can see that we are at a resistance point, um, which we are also at a resistance point on, on Bitcoin right now. So wait till my lines come in. So we, we can see that um, resistances and supports are usually caused by waves hitting the top or the bottom or sort of where there's, you know, a region where many waves sort of meet and and that's how we we gauge a resistance point so at this point here uh, we've got tops of waves that are, are kind of happening so we can see they're all sort of meeting this one has stopped in this region so we'll probably see um, a little bit of a correction happening which will happen in BTC as well so if anyone's buying in at this point I wouldn't really suggest it unless they print a whole heap of more tether and they start pushing it through um but so we've we've got a correction coming within the market at this point um i don't think it's going to be a massively deep correction and, and then we're going to continue pushing up so we, we're going to have a little bit of money come out over the next probably day and then we're going to push up towards the end of the week and we should hit those um targets within BTC. Now, there's a next bullish pivot on BTC, depending on exchange, sort of sits at 10,600 to about 10,800. So we just, we don't need to pass that, we just need to tap it. And um, just tapping that target will ensure that we are in pattern to head to the 16,000 and potentially 21,000 and 30K if mega FOMO kicks in so that's what we want and the exchanges know that this is what we want so there's there's been a lot of tether printing and this is what is going to draw the people money talks money always talks and so you know the more money that is sort of you know printed and and brought into the market will bring new people into the market which means that they can pull their tether out so this, this is what happens. And we saw during the 2017 bull run that we would get $1,000 drops. And, you know, one day it would be $10,000. The next day it was $9,000. And all of a sudden, the day after that, it was $11,000. So we were having these massive, massive fluctuations. So it was 
kind of impossible to margin trade. It was um, in, you, impossible to have a stop loss on there because the stops were getting taken out. So you were you were sort of trading naked uh, a lot of the time in that market if you wanted to survive. And this is what's about to happen. Mm. Um, yeah. So you know, if you're working on stop losses, they're going to be the liquidity for the market. And um, leverage trading is also going to be the liquidity for the market because that is where the greatest money for exchanges can be made. And, and that's how they can continue to push the price higher. So for anyone that's over leveraging, you've got to understand that these the waves in a, a bull market move, especially in Bitcoin, $1,000 to $2,000 either way. And they do in very, very short periods of time. So, and that is how the price is pushed up. Because as I said, liquidity is the king in the bull market. And that's what you want. So taking people's stops and killing their leverage trades, essentially you're taking their money. So, and that, that's what that tweet is. And I, I've posted on Twitter. So if anyone wants to have a look, um, a breakdown of what Scrooge McDuck is. So um, there's a, the website that explains how, you know, all the lessons that Scrooge McDuck teaches everyone in the, uh, the Looney Tunes cartoons or Disney, I think it was. Lisa, while you're on this, uh, mm -hmm. this particular chart, could you just zoom out to uh, just give some perspective to the total market cap during the last bull run and where we're at currently? Yeah. So we can see last bull run, we had massive, massive amounts of money come into the market. So we put, so $765 billion. So we're not even halfway yet. And um, so potentially, so we've got 324 billion and we're at halfway marker um sort of you know bitcoin went to twenty thousand or nineteen thousand nine hundred and eighty or something but um so essentially we've just crossed that ten thousand dollar mark and we're not even halfway so that that does mean that we can cross the all-time high if the the market continues to rise within um and the money starts flowing in so essentially um 765 billion dollars potentially is 25 to 30,000 um, USD Bitcoin. So when you think of the market that way. So, um, and an another thing is uh, you've got all the DeFi and all the alt. So those will run as well. And then the money pulls out of those and it goes into Bitcoin. Now I thought about 10 days ago, this was going to happen, but it took a little longer than what I thought. So we uh, move on to the other big mover, obviously. In we the shall. The other big Ethereum. mover was Ethereum. So if we go, I've got about 500 charts. Um, so we had a, a double head and shoulders pattern here on Ethereum. And the first one pushed us up and we hit uh, our channel resistance. And then we've come down, we corrected, and that was in line with the correction that uh, BTC did for two months. So from the 1st of June, right through until the 18th of July. So, you know, and, and this is, goes in line with what I was seeing with BTC. So on the, the 17th of July, it was my tweet about, I had just put all my profits into BTC and, at this point as well, we started moving with Ethereum. So um, I always like, I tell people how my portfolio is broken down. So I've got 25% BTC, 25% Ethereum, 25% BSV, and the rest is spread into alts. So my alts bags are actually like, <laughs> I've got a lot more money in them at the moment because of Elrond, but um, than, than they normally would. Alron's just gone. Don't mention that name. I want to. I want to burst into tears every time you say it. <laughs> yeah. So ERD. I won't say the whole name. Has just gone three hundred and thirty-three percent. 
three, no, 3,333% since um, the purchase of that coin. So it's like massively, massively huge. There's my daughter walking through. <laughs> and um, yeah, so this is the same point on BTC. So Ethereum started to move. Ethereum started to push out news uh, that uh, 2.0 was coming, that they were nearing completion, that, uh, you know, they had the necessary Ethereum or close to it. They've actually had a BTC deposit uh, to Ethereum because I've got the cross-chain stuff happening and, and that has enabled them to, you know, start the 2.0 project and Ethereum has absolutely taken off. The only thing is it's like the mempool on both BTC and Ethereum is so clogged at the moment. Um, there's something like 200,000 Ethereum transactions that are, you know, still waiting to be confirmed. So, you know, the, the way, there's a way that you can, if you want to spend a little bit more money to get your transaction pushed ahead, so you send all of the money, you copy your wallet address that you've sent your Ethereum from or your BTC from, and you send all of your money back to yourself. So at the highest possible fee. So, you know, and that, if, if you've got an urgent transaction, that'll push your transaction through. So it's kind of a cheats way to do it, but it's, it's gonna cost you more money. So, you know, if, if you're looking at transferring money or a crypto, um, I wouldn't be doing Ethereum or BTC right now. I'd be looking to uh, BSV, Litecoin, XRP, all move instantaneously. So, and, and all have, you know, the capacity to do so. Uh, Ethereum and BTC just don't have it. Uh, once Ethereum does go into the 2.0 though, They've still got some issues um, moving forward with that. So, and th this is why ERD is, is such a big thing for me and why I call ERD the Ethereum killer is because, you know, the transaction speed is 10,000 compared to the, <laughs> the small transaction speed that um, Ethereum has. They have bigger blocks. Uh, you know, there, there's so many different things and they have um, the interchain that interoperability that's that word that i can never say um which allows you know you to sort of other chains to talk to each other and that's what erd does and that's why it's so amazing such an amazing project that, and people are, are noticing and that's why it's it's going up so um let's go i'll show you this is a chart that i put up on trading view and my dog's gonna bark sorry We've got my drinks. <laughs> so this is a happy Lisa if it gets up here. So we've got a, a 1,045 target. Um, we need to hit this 300 and around probably 374 to 384, depending on exchange. We're nearly there. Um, if BTC continues to push through, which I think it will, I think we're going to get a small correction along the way. but um, Ethereum Ethereum's going to see uh, a bull run to 1,045. So I don't think we're going to get the, we could with FOMO. Uh, we may not get the all-time high on Ethereum, but I definitely think we're going to see it with BTC because BTC is the name that people know. So if you're coming into the crypto market, you're going to buy Bitcoin. And, you know, there, it, it's marketed out there that crypto is Bitcoin. I don't care what anyone else says, that's what it's marketed as. Um, yeah, so I'll quickly bring you I, up. Can I just, can I just, can I just throw a little comment in there though on that yeah. one. Um, you know, I've, I've, people that have been in the space for a while, but I've, maybe not constantly in the space, but hold some BTC, hold some Ethereum. I seem to be getting more interest from that crowd on what's happening on Ethereum and DeFi to the extent that the common question I'm getting asked is, am I too heavy in BTC? Uh, comments, please. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there is that. So um, obviously with the interoperability of these chains, I, I think, you know, and a lot of them being built on, you know, Ethereum platforms, 
then, you know, uh, um, the ICOs on these were all done on Ethereum. So, you know, they are built on Ethereum platforms. About, I think it's 40%, 30 to 40% of these Ethereum platforms have moved across to other platforms. Mm. So I, I don't think, you know, BSV's picked up a lot of the Ethereum platforms. Um, so I don't think it's all Ethereum anymore. Um, but yeah, so you, you do have those, you know, that Ethereum base to a lot of these things and a lot of these projects. Yeah. So, you know, Ethereum is going, is a major player in it. It's as long as they can get the 2.0 right and they can get it functioning and working as it should, yeah. because right now it's not. So, you know, it's right up there with, with BTC where, you know, it, they're the dinosaurs of crypto. So unless they innovate and keep these projects moving forward, they're going to be taken over by projects like all these DeFi projects. So, you know, Ampleforth, Alrond, um, P Network, yeah, Synthetic Network. So many projects are just going to come in and, and take over this space. And mm. while Bitcoin is the founding father of all of this, it's maybe a dinosaur, just, you know, like people say, the store of gold. Yeah. So, and, and that could be, you know, just what it is. Yeah. I'm sort of, I wouldn't say I'm at a crossroads, but it, it is a fascinating sort of time. The, clearly the institutions, you know, it's all about Bitcoin and. What's the charts this week? Yeah. All the action in, uh, in BTC and Ethereum. Uh, mm -hmm. Did he, uh, You've made some fantastic videos this week. Um, any comments on the overall sort of space from yourself, sir? No, what, not you, really. Um, not really? Okay, recovery. thanks for coming, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, man, I'm still recovering from a very heavy weekend of meeting all my family and friends and combined with alcohol and a lot of fun. But uh, yeah, yeah, of course, uh, Bitcoin is go going up. Ethereum is going up. Everything is going sky high because the aliens are visiting us. You know, we need to greet them with a green candle because else. We do. Um, well, how else are they going to, you know, <laughs> to do anything if they don't have any Bitcoin to spend? So, you know, the aliens are buying up all the Bitcoin here. Well, look, um, apparently these, this alien ship, this is what, is just fantastic. We think we're having a bad year. These aliens made it all the way to Earth, then apparently crashed. That's that's shitty. But serious, <laughs> what, 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 I, I didn't get this. I didn't get this story. So there's an alien ship that crashed. Like yeah. This so year? They, they've said that. I, I'm not sure entirely sure when it, it was, but the, um, the White House has come out and and said that you know. Hang on. Let me. Uh, so evidence suggests UFO whistleblower Bob Lazar was telling the truth. After all, a Pentagon contractor gave classified briefing to the US government officials in March of off-world vehicles not made for this earth. So they've, um, so Joe Rogan has had some guests on the show and it, they've, they've talked about this and, you know, it, it's really fascinating um, but yes, of... effectively they crashed. They made it all the way to Earth, and they crashed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So what happened to like I don't know what the aliens they are like or the very high were... tech. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> then again, when we what finally do they look like when we finally get to Mars, we'll probably crash there. I guess uh, I, I suppose it does kind of make sense. But, yeah. So, yeah, but what, what do they actually look like and, and what, you know, can they morph into people? What, what do they look like? This is the thing. Yeah. It's like, they have one. I tried it. Like. Oh, God, there's a little kid with a gun next to you, Didi. Watch out. <laughs> it's alien. It's alien. It's my you little, little nephew. You've got little blonde aliens. Say hello. hello. Say hello to my little friend. That's what he's saying. <laughs> <laughs> like and Sean, no. friend. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> little green friend. Okay. Because he's got his nephew there and he's got a gun. Before <laughs> the show completely deteriorates into um, yeah. alien let's, and Let's and keep it serious, Sean. <laughs>
Sorry? It's, it's all every Monday. It's the same. You're not keeping it serious. I know. I know. I apologize. <laughs> I just wanted to ask you both and then we'll get to the aliens. Okay. Didi, what do you think of the DeFi space? Are you having a punt on anything? Does it remind you of the ICO boom? Where does yes. it sort of fit into your thinking? It's completely, it's completely the ICO boom. But it's hype, you know, and, and, and the hype is creating, a, yeah, the hype is creating FOMO. And uh, yeah, there's another ICO boom in the back of Could you ask your <laughs> co-host what, uh, what he's investing in? in the, uh, has he got any picks for us? We'd like to involve do like, children in... Uh, do, you like, do you like Bitcoin? Do you have Bitcoin? Do you own Bitcoin? Absolute Bitcoin. Yes. Okay, yeah, good. Bitcoin. Okay, so many. <laughs> <laughs> Back to no, so the, what? Yeah, no, it's, it, 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 the whole DeFi, it's, it's all hype. It's all hype. And it's not cryptocurrency, in my opinion. It's just, um, it, it's, you know, it's, it is cryptocurrency, but what, what, where is the decentralization in these cryptos? You know, and that's what we are all talking about. Bitcoin being a dinosaur. Yeah, it's a dinosaur. But in my oh, opinion, it, do, it, do, it does what it does well, DD. And don't, don't get me wrong. Uh, it's, no, it's, it's decentralized, Sean. Yeah. yeah it's, it's, we don't want another filthy monetary system that is going to disrupt the whole humanity by just mm. being not honest. Think about it this way, DD. So, you know, think of like all these blockchains as the road. I use my car yeah. theory. So we don't all like Toyota. We don't all like, you know, Lambos. We don't all like the same car. But... Yeah. The, the DeFi allows us to all drive on the same road if we want to. So you can then take your Prius or your Lambo and you can drive on that other blockchain. So that's essentially what DeFi allows us oh, to do. Of, of course, I understand this. And of course, I understand that the whole DeFi industry is the groundwork for all these centralized, the CBDC, these centralized European digital currencies to operate and to conquer the world again on the filthy way they have been doing with the US dollar and the euro. I think it's a step that the governments have been creating and be allowing to create. Because if you look at these DeFi projects, how can they even exist? They are, they are able to print money. It has never been allowed by a government to allow projects to print money. And now these DeFi industry projects can print money as hell. So they are allowing this. They are regulating this. So there is a thought behind it because of the governments. They want to create this highway so that they can overrule the highway we created that called, was called Bitcoin or Litecoin or whatever. So I, I think there is, uh, this is a way for them um, to disrupt the system we were building. And I, I'm very afraid, and I'm very afraid that because of the status of the human beings and living in fear because of this COVID and all the shit, and because of being in shock and having a financial crisis and having unemployment, they yeah. will all grab now to the safety net again because it feels safe because it's given to them by the government and the banks. And now the banks are allowing all these people to store their Bitcoins on the same safety net. So I think they already know what they are doing. And I think it's a very beautiful strategic uh, step the governments have been taking by allowing these... You may well be absolutely thing. correct, Edie. I, 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 there's a lot happening at the moment that does concern me. I find it astounding that uh, in, in media we're seeing all these scam ads running on it, even on our channels, uh, yet yeah. we're, we're getting censored left, right and center. Um, I agree. I do think we're going to end up with central bank issued digital currencies. In fact, I was on a webinar last week uh, with some U S politicians talking on the subject. They, they actually praised the Bitcoin, the fact that it hadn't been hacked for 11 years, etc. I think what we're going to see is these, uh, these, Central bank digital currencies and a lot of what's happening in DeFi will effectively hang off the end of that. So yes, it will be part of the Big Brother system without a doubt. Um, Bitcoin it will be the only project completely separate to that. It's decentralized. You know, if you're smart enough to, to have your own Bitcoin in your possession, then that's the big difference. And we'll continue to educate people on that. But I also see that the some of these DeFi projects will disrupt the retail banks. Now, these things continually are propped up when we go into these crises. Why? That shouldn't be happening. I think some of these DeFi projects will effectively replace what we've got in our current banking system. And, you know, yes, it may be hanging off the end of a digital central bank digital currency, but it's still 
is a step in the right direction for me. It's still part of that old system, but it's a step <coughs> in the right direction. But that's, that's my position. Let, let, let's say that the step will continue and we will think like uh, two years up front or forward, you know? Yeah. Then the banks will be allowed to hold your bitcoins as a custodial service. Oh, you so, might as well throw your bitcoins away for, for a lot of people. <laughs> it's it's exactly. a game show. It's a big game, and I'm 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 oh, I'm very absolutely. afraid that it's I'm very afraid that we are going to lose the game if we again step into this world of banking uh, banks allowing people to store their bitcoins there or banks allowing projects oh, like think... banks allowing projects like Tether or like Dai or like all of them to just continuously print money out of thin air because that's the biggest competition that banks have been stopping at Facebook and Libra. They don't allow them, but they do allow all these other projects. There's a reason behind it. Mm. But I think, I think rather than complain about the game, Didi, you've got to learn to play it. And it's no, like, you just, not, no, no. You, you've it's got, this, you've got this awareness that, you know, putting yeah. your Bitcoin into a bank is going to possibly, you know, you might lose it. So you're not going to do yeah. it. No. So, you know, that, that's, you know, the game. So, you know, it's... For me, it's the goal to educate people on the same, on the same game. You know, yeah, I'm not complaining you, about these to... projects, but I'm, I'm, I'm just not, re I'm not understanding why the community is giving so much attention to this game. If they could give the same attention to another game. If I, because you know, it's if... greed. <laughs> it's, it's money. Money exactly. and it's greed exactly. and it's like exactly. money is power and you yeah. know a lot of a lot of people think of that still to this day that you know with money you have freedom as well so yeah. you know th there's so many things that are attached to money that mm. uh, are not necessarily good and you know you've just got to be aware of that and 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 do uh, the best thing for you you can't control what anyone else does you can try and educate them but you can't control. You can lead by example. You can lead no, you by can't. example. You can lead by you can example. Say, you can show. Uh, you can show. You can show, for example, Lisa. You could show that you have all the money you want and all the money you have. But when you're locked up in your house, what is the money good for? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So, so that is, you know, so that is what we should talk about, not about the <laughs> well, projects that are allowed to spend like, money and money. You know, I, and I, I agree I with you all. Have... I love DeFi. I love all the stable currencies. I love everything. Yeah. But for me, I think there is this. There's something behind it, which will we find out in a few years that is going to disrupt the system we were um, supposed to disrupt. And we are not yeah. disrupting the system anymore. We are and I, I, totally, this. I totally agree with you on that point. Like I, I was the happiest when I was traveling the world and I was doing all the stuff I wanted. And, you know, I was helping uh, my ex out getting better. And I, I was happy to do that. And I was happy to spend all the money on that and not be making all the money and not be sitting here trading all day. You know, it, it's, I, I thought my year this year was going to be vastly different. So, I, you know, I put up a, a tweet saying that I was going to be focusing on my film. I left my discord. I did all of these things because money is not the focus of, of what I want to do. It never has been and it never will be. And, um, yeah, that, that's kind of, I agree with you on that point, Didi, that you can have all the money in the world and that doesn't buy happiness. You know, I'm, I'm sitting in my house and it's not where I want to be. I, I would rather be traveling the world or I'd rather be helping people. Or I'd rather be doing something of value that, you know, I, I feel like I'm contributing. So, and, and, that's, and that's why I spend so much time on Twitter because I do have the time. Mm. Um, you know, I am, I am writing and I am doing all of that stuff, but while I've got time, I can help people sort of make some money now and then they, when this is done, they can go and live their life and hopefully they go, oh, Lisa, help me do this. Yeah. Dee, Dee you know. question. Um, obviously, you know, you were very much an influential, uh, figure in, in my understanding of, of what Bitcoin is and, you know, I, I still hold on to, to. So you know what you taught me years ago. Now, what 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 have you seen? What, you seem a little annoyed about what what's happening in that BTC uh, community. What where have they lost their way? In your opinion, what what's what's going wrong and what's going well? That's it, very easy to summarize it. I've said it many times. We have evolved from a, a small community of people with a revolutionary thought of disrupting the monetary system to a very egoistic, selfish community that is only accumulating wealth. So 
you will not be able to win or to disrupt a system or to win a revolution if you're only thinking about accumulating wealth and yourself. Because if the goal of this accumulating wealth would be at the end to spend this wealth in disrupting the system, I will fully agree with it, but that's not the goal. The, the people that are now in the system and now in the crypto community are just in it to make wealth for themselves. And they are not going to share with it. They don't care about other people. It's just about, you know, this simple um, yeah, greed that has been uh, brought into to their mindset since, you know, because of the schools and all that stuff, which I already say. But, you know, if, if everybody was should stop for a moment and really observe what is happening in crypto space, then nobody can deny that we are being swallowed again by the banks. It's, it's happening. And we are not fighting against it. We are swimming with the flow with it because it makes us filthy rich. I, this I is what I feel very it's, sad it's about. like, you know, if, if you're trading and, you know, my major investments are sitting in BTC, Ethereum and BSV and they're within my control, I'm not going to give the banks that control. So if you are promoting knowledge and, you know, it, it's only the minority that are going to give those banks control of their Bitcoin or whatever and, and say, here, I'm going to get a home loan against this or I'm going to buy a car against this, you hold my Bitcoin and you know, I'm going to take a $20,000 loan or a $250,000 loan or whatever. And that's, that's a, you know, a, a few people. I don't think that's the bulk of the crypto community. I think the community as a whole know, you know, what Bitcoin and what cryptocurrency is all about. I think, you know, a few new people coming in are going to have that idea. And then there's the greed, of course. Mm. You know, I, I can see, by the way, some people think that they can speak to me on Twitter and ask me, you know, various different questions without being polite and I just ignore them. And, you know, the, there's those people coming in and then you've got the really respectful, lovely people that have been there for such a long time. A, yeah. a lot of the people that I have um, on Twitter have been following me for like four or five years. And, you know, we've had, I, I know who they are. I know what they do. I know, you know, their, you know, their backgrounds and everything. And, and those people are still there. And I, I think they're just not being as vocal. And I think if these no, no, things no, no, start no. to happen, then they're going to start vocalizing it. I, I fully agree with that. I don't even doubt your, you know, your ethics or whatever, because I think, I, I know that yeah. you're on it. I in it for the same reasons. But the, what, I, what I mean to say is that um, if, if we don't guard the fact that if you give kids a finger, they take your hand and they take your arm. And um, this is the same tactics the banks are using at the moment. We are yeah. slowly, we are not, you're not giving away control. They are taking control, but very slowly on this very smart uh, backstabbing way again. And we are not seeing this. So we are just agreeing with it because we don't know what else to do. But they are starting now with, you know, no, no, no. You can hold some Bitcoins at our bank. And they will go further and further and further, and they will dig themselves into this industry again. And that, uh, that the, because of this greedy mindset of the people, they will get control. They will grab control. And this is what we, I think, as a community, need to guard. And I don't. Th and I think this bull run is perfect. I love trading. I love, uh, you know, the, this whole community. But I think at the same time, this bull run is confusing people as well. Because if we will see a huge bull run on the background, these banks are grabbing more control, we will not be focusing on the bank. We will be focusing on the bull run. And this is how governments play the game everywhere. They create some disorder somewhere in the world so they can yeah. you know, do their plan here. And I have this strange thing that I don't understand why they suddenly allow all these DeFi products because it's creating money, it's printing money. But that's another good reason to have some some Bitcoin money you actually control because when cash is gone, we are firmly in the same scenario as China. Uh, they, the, your personal but has, has really cash, good. this is my argument with cash. It's like <laughs> hardly anyone uses cash. And it's like we've been using FBOS cards forever. And it's like, you know, now in Australia, you can't, it's, you know, you can't use cash with COVID, but I don't know. Yeah, but Lisa, I actually it's, it's, used it. 
yeah, but it's 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 more, you know it, it's more that concept of I, I totally understand what you're saying, but we have the option of cash. Uh, you know, you can stick some money under your bed in a, in a safe. It's yours. You're in control of it. Once yeah. that's gone, and you're in a, a, a scenario that the Chinese are, where things are, are socially scored, I don't want. That's a scary move for me, and I, I think we're heading in that direction at the moment. It's it's another use case for having money you control that you you are the custody you know the yeah, and of. that is definitely another use case for having cryptocurrency for yeah. sure, and yeah. you know having control of that money and to being able to sort of. You're not going to stash I mean, I, I agree with Didi. A yeah. lot of these, a lot of these cryptos are going to end up being extensions of central bank digital currencies. They're going to, they're going to tag on to to the end of these things as they're launched. And uh, it seems a given that that's happening now. Uh, so look, you know, just a summary from my point of view: Bitcoin, BTC, money you control, be your own bank. Very, very different thing to a lot of the the innovations happening that I'm also quite excited about. They, they, they hopefully will disrupt. But there's a thing that my brother says about being your own bank. So a bank um, is able to give loans. It's able to give security. It's able to give like mm. all of these things. So being your own bank ensures like that you can go and get a home loan or you can go and um, take a bond or you can, you can do so many things. So you know, Nexo products like Lend AAVE and Elrond and those sort of products offer the ability to be a bank. You can put your crypto there and you can loan against it. Like and the, that's what a like bank the Uber is. Of, so, of banking. Yeah, so a bank just isn't, you know, putting your money in it and, and using your money. A bank does is a financial service. Yeah. Oh, but I, I fully agree with you on this, Lisa. Don't get me wrong. I love that these projects are popping up, but I think these projects are now used. That's what I thought that you uh, understood me. The, the banks are grabbing this power back slowly. So yes, yeah, they no, are. I, I don't understand they, that. They, I was just they, are, they, are, they are. They are. They are allowing these projects to pop up, which are beautiful. But as soon the banks offer the same service as these projects, they will kill those projects with regulations. And then these projects like Nexo and all those projects we love, they are gone. Everybody has their Bitcoins and cryptocurrencies and uh, custodians at banks because you get 18% of the interest there as well. And then you're fucked. And this is the game they are playing, I think. I think this is the step in between. They created to get the connection between the minds of the people and the crypto and the banks, and not directly into a bank. But that, but that goes down the line as well, Didi, for a project that you've been talking about. So the, the MCO credit card, where yeah. you've got your Bitcoin sitting in there. Yeah. Seems and, a little too you know, good to be true, that one to me. Yeah, so, you know, no, essentially, that's the same, I, that's I, I the think, same thing. Yeah, I fully yeah. agree. I, I use them and I love what they are doing, but I think now, till last week, I was very positive on this industry. I was very positive on this development of the DeFi industry, like CryptoCon, the cars and all this stuff. But since last week, everything changed. The banks are now allowed to hold all your Bitcoins. This is a very dangerous step. This means they will be the same as Crypto.com, as Nexo, as Money Token, as all these step up projects we have created. The banks are getting the same position. And the next step will be, they will make regulations that all these other companies will be deleted again and the banks get the power back again and they will be the Nexo and they will be again this custodial service that gives you interest because they can't give you fucking interest and normal money. You need to pay on it. So they are yeah. figuring yeah, out how- Yeah, you do, you do. Well, you know, normal money, you get probably, you know, 3% yeah. if that per annum. So it, it's a Ooh. minute amount. <laughs> And it's like, well, you can get 3% in a second right now in Bitcoin. So it's like, why would you, you know, unless you're sort of 60 or 70 or 80 and set in your ways like Warren Buffett, you're not going to do it. You know, that, that you're going to continue putting your money in bonds or in the bank or whatever. You know, the, but this is a new way of investing and a new way of making money for this new generation that's coming through. And we really need to encourage that. And I understand what you're saying, but I still think let's, it's a let's, way. Let's make it very easy, okay? You, you, your, your, your niece and your, the parents of your niece, whatever, and they now get the option to buy Bitcoins. Are they going to use Nexo or are they going to use their bank account? 
They're going to use their bank account. So well, what are they doing? Yeah, fucking. Hopefully, it? hopefully, there's oh. companies like um, you know. They are not. They are not going to use Nexo. You and me, we crazy as fuck people in the crypto community. We <laughs> we we have been in this. We have been in this industry. We believe these things. But now that these banks are going to offer the same service, every family member of mine I met on the last two days here partying, you yeah. know, I, I got I got them to buy some Bitcoin and everything. But all of them, I asked them the same question: If your bank is going to offer you to buy bitcoins and hold them for you, would you do it or would you trust me? They chose the bank. Everybody okay. in the world is going to choose those banks because it's easy. Because there's only one upgrade of their banking app: update. Oh shit! I had bitcoins. Why would they? You know, this is this is. They are. Yeah, sorry, sorry. They see, are just see, see, this this goes along the the whole lines of um, the marketing that these uh, cryptocurrency companies need to do to get this yeah. out into the public yeah. as to you know what they do and and what they can achieve. And, and I've said this for such a long time, like coming from a marketing background that we need to bring that into cryptocurrency. You know, I think um, things like BSV are so under-marketed, it's not funny. And, you know, for what they can do, and you can have your name as your wallet. It's like, you know, people send me via hand cash, Lisa and Edwards, they know that that's my wallet. Yeah. So, you know, there, there's so much marketing that this space needs to do to take it away from the banks and they're just not doing it. So I, I do agree with that, yeah. that, you know, the we trust, have been for years, you know, we get bugger all support from these communities. Oh, yeah. So it's Ooh. just like, you know, you've got this uh, trust and people trust banks. They trust them as secure and they trust them that yeah. they're not going to do the wrong thing. Whereas cryptocurrency for such a long time has been marketed by, you know, Silk Road and by the media as dodgy as fuck. So, you know, we've, we've got to change that idea and that perception in people's minds. Mm. Well, and I mean, it's look, it's a slow process. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you know, even within BTC, there's some, so there's some great people there, but at, at, at times does feel like banging my head on the wall. You know, I've, I'm, I'm pretty sure Didi shares the same sentiments. And I'm, you know, we, we create this content. There aren't people yeah. that are getting behind us and go, your message is great. More people need to hear it. Here's some funding. It just doesn't happen in, in BTC. The people that are getting funded are through these, these wrapped products now, which is effectively putting your, your Bitcoin in, into banks. They'll throw money at you. Yeah. Uh, but that's not Bitcoin. That's, you know, uh, I, I'd be happy to take money from other projects doing similar things in other projects. That's great, you know, and that's what I, some of the things I like in DeFi. But that's not Bitcoin. Uh, that's what well, BTC, at least, anyway. So yeah. that's a real frustration. Uh, I, I don't know whether that's going to change or not. I mean, it, or, it also <laughs> then throws up the, the worry that, oh, okay, well, Bitcoin does actually end up doing well. Jesus Christ, who are some of these big bag holders that are going to be the most powerful people out there? That's also a worry. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> it's a oh, real I don't, think, I, don't, <laughs> I, I don't think those people have changed a great deal, though. I don't think, you know, a huge amount of wealth came into Bitcoin at three, four thousand dollars $4,000 when we got to that low. I think the general population still weren't excited about Bitcoin. I think it's still the same people that are <laughs> buying up Bitcoin and still hold the majority of it. Mm. So, yeah. And I, like I think, the, I... you know, that's the exchanges. I really think that's the, the big whales and the exchanges. And I think that's not going to change. Yeah. Yes. Well, I'm liking some of the fire in the belly chat here today, people. It's very good. I mean, <laughs> we're, 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 it's sort of an indication of, uh, I hope people can understand that we're, we're very passionate about what we do. The traditional system is shaking, but at the same time, and it does, I agree, Didi, it does feel like it's encroaching fast in, on, on the space, maybe not in the if right you, ways. If you, Many if respects. You, Sorry, go if you zoom out into this whole, whole adventure, Sean, you zoom out, you, know? <laughs> you can see we are, you know, the, the, one of the first steps in this whole industry was we are going to uh, bank the unbanked, you know? That got, they got forgotten, didn't it? I think we've forgotten about this, but I think the banks didn't forget about this. They, they are going to do this now. And that's how they are going to be the saviors of the world again, because their app 
will there will be able to be downloaded by those 2.7 billion unbanked people as well. Yeah. Just by having a phone, you don't have to have a bank account anymore because we shifted away. You can now hold your crypto. It's the same. So this, the bank. same as they're like, bank, you know, BSV has been going into Africa. Akon has yeah. a, a project yeah. that he's taking know, into Africa. So, you know, th there's so many projects that do that though, Didi. Mm. So it's, oh, I, it's not I, necessarily I the banks you. going into the those regions. The banks don't go into those regions. So no. that's why these projects, you know, are taking advantage of this yeah. and it's it's yeah. good. So I, I don't think the banks no, are going to take that over. I, feel, I fully agree with you that, that, that we are already doing it, but it's a very strange timing of the banking industry and all monetary system to take these steps and allow all this stuff now, because this would be the perfect time to still overtake them. Of course, it's perfect that, B, that BSV or Akon is doing this in Senegal and beautiful, he's going to build this crypto city, but probably funded by the banks as well. And probably, you know, and probably the banks are seeing now that the power of blockchain and crypto is very big and it's perfectly a perfect tool to decentralize the world. And, and of course, on the background, they have been developing all these blockchain projects themselves as well. And they are going to roll them out and they are going to offer all these poor people in the world uh, land, uh, la landings uh, as well. It's, and, yeah, know, it's the perfect on tool the for... Uh... It's the perfect tool for a central bank to use blockchain to issue its a its own currency, but then to make these universal basic income payments, which I think is not too far away. I, I do see that's and how then, this is going to evolve. That's you know we're we're entering a a very different world quickly. Lisa, and then I'm not, I'm not, your work. I'm not giving up. I'm not no, giving don't. up. No, yeah, don't. You give don't up. I'm telling. Up. You I'm tell them like an aliens to come and pick me up. I'm out of here. <laughs> I, don't know. I, I am already talking to a group of aliens. I, I think you're already to talking to aliens. What? Yeah, they are, they are going to help me. They are going to help me to disrupt this. Are they green? <laughs> Tell me about them, Didi. Maybe Didi is the alien, Lee. Maybe he's the alien, the, he's the alien that's come to save us. Two of them are green? Are there, are yeah, there well, any pink aliens? One one is pink. I fancy that's the pink right. one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think she's female, but I know if the roles are turned around on this island, I don't know. Maybe the yeah. pink ones are the human, the pink ones. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look, I've, enjoy, I've enjoyed this chat. I didn't see this one coming today, but, uh, you know, clearly a lot of fire in the belly and it's important times. And with Didi, uh, keep up what you're doing. You, I think you're one of the, the few people out there really trying to educate people on exactly what this uh, technology does provide and what it really is. Uh, and yeah, that yeah, does get lost. Does get as lost. long as they don't allow us to, as long as they don't are not shadow banning us and not allowing us to reach. Ah, uh, yeah, that is yeah, that is because yeah. <laughs> I'm not quite I, sure. I, I, I'm, I'm, I need to be very honest because I'm so busy with all that stuff. I'm now getting help of Lisa with trading, and Lisa has already <laughs> has already helped me with a few trades, but I, I'm so busy I just forget to put in the trades. That's like terrible. <laughs> I've been you telling you guys, eyes, it's yeah. just rum. <laughs> it's just rum. <laughs> I really need to get up to normal life again, man. <laughs> so are they rum eyes? It's rum eyes. It's like Friday rum, Saturday rum, and Sunday rum. <laughs> and now getting up at eight o'clock. <laughs> never yeah. been a big drinker, Didi. What's going on? Are they uh, are they leaving you astray in uh, in Holland? I think. I'm destroying COVID with rum. <laughs> oh, rum. Is, well, there's lots of different rums. So you could go, you know, white rum. You could go, you know. Dark rum. Dark I, rum. Yeah. I'm I making a new shirt. I saw your you video still... cruising around on a nice boat, uh, stopping at a, a restaurant called Moby Dick. Yeah, hey. going to Moby Dick and, you know, promoting whales. Yeah. But that was really happening. I was watching your chart and we were in this boat trip to the rest of a friend and it's called Moby Dick. It really is called Moby Dick with this will as a logo. I think that was the same day that I had my Moby is a, he's a dick it, chart. Yeah, yeah it's like, exactly and he, that Because he was taking out the stop losses, all, all the shorters. It's like it's, the shorters would go in and he'd be like, no, sorry. I think, uh, well, like, I think you two are the aliens. I think something's going on here. <laughs> something is good. Something is good. And I was eating my shrimp, my pasta shrimp. And I see this Moby Dick, I see the chart, I see Bitcoin flying up. I'm like, this is too many coincidences. This is not possible. 
there is some kind of a strange connection now between dicks. This is not. Um, <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> no, they're not dicks. They're dildos. So we've had the the big green dildos, especially yes. in Alron. So we've had the biggest the biggest dildo in Alron ever. So yeah. How did it feel? It's it's felt completely <laughs> awesome. It's like me love you long time. <laughs> Well, it's it's pretty much the only guild I've had for a while. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 oh, wait, we use a better one. <laughs> oh Lord, <laughs> Didi, Didi, how sorry. how is Holland anyway? You've been there for a week. Yeah. You, you can, make it right. it... <sighs> can you see how it is? It's <laughs> terrible. <laughs> <laughs> He, he needs to go back to the to the healthy life of uh, Copenhagen. <laughs> next week, next week. Uh, no, it's it's it has been beautiful. The last weekend was amazing. My grandmother turned eighty five, so we had uh, my sister and her, my nieces organize a huge party with fans and music, and it was it was a beautiful weekend because I got to see all my family in two days. <laughs> but all my families are alcoholics. <laughs> 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 no, no. Now one of the, it was it, it just beautiful to see all your family again and have some drinks and fun and dance with your grandmother and uh, you, you played Elvis songs and all that stuff. So I had a lot of fun, but I have these younger nephews and they are like, oh no, no, Didi, stay up. So <laughs> you stay up till four or 30 and then you get up at eight again because you cannot sleep and you know, you don't get any sleep. And then the day after, you're not on that nephew has his birthday, you go there for one or stay there until two o'clock again with some rum because they still know I'm yeah I, I drink rum. I think my newest T-shirt is going to be rum BTC. <laughs> rum BTC is not like rum. What is it? Rum DMC. So it's like yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah So you've just completely changed it. I'm gonna get the T-shirts <laughs> off your your website, Didi. They're really cool. Have you guys designed any yourselves or? Yeah, well, I, I've got my latest yeah. T-shirt. Hang on to two secs. I've, I've told them I'll put it up. Trading view. <laughs> All of them. Shameless plug. Shameless plug. Shameless plug. The trading view. So yeah. My sexy new good. trading t-shirt. <laughs> awesome. As a, as a female in crypto, I'm supposed to put it on there and puff out my chest and take a selfie. So there you go. <laughs> can I, can I send you? Can I send you a t-shirt, Lisa? <laughs> I have to do that. Yeah. Can I send you a crop top? Oh! <laughs> <laughs> I will send you. Three. I will, send her, I will send her. I will send her the T-shirt. What's wrong with Sean? Send Sean it. What is wrong with Absolutely. So uh, we, we can both wear one. Okay. okay. I will, I, we're both going to wear crop tops. Okay. I, did, I didn't actually say a crop top. Yeah, you did. <laughs> what is a crop top? <laughs> oh, Sean. A crop top's like saw, a shirt that you know, sort of. Crops I saw you already under. wearing an XS shirt of Tone Day, so I think a crop top will do as well. Oh. You. Yeah. Tone Vase like who? It's like somebody behind me is like. Oh. No, no, I have a Tone Vase T-shirt. I'm just trying. Yeah. To, I've got it here. But I, yeah. I will send you both some T-shirts. Um, uh, Satoshi is female. I think it's cool for Lisa. <laughs> just choose. I will send you a coat, and you can choose online and buy shirts, and you get them for free. Okay. Yes, because of all the green canvas. Your Tone Vase did actually give me a, a, a T-shirt, and the, the you remember it's just his head. <laughs> It was a crop top for you. It was a crop top. I've got it. I'll wear it next week, actually. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. I, you know you've made it when you've got your own T-shirt with your head on it. I guess. Well done, Tone. Uh, you've made it. Somebody asked me for stickers the other day, so I must have made it. They wanted stickers with my rockets and magnets oh, on you've made it. So it, I'm Lisa. like, you've made I've it. made it. Woo! <laughs> hey, she wasn't going Telegram. She made it really big time. Woo! Good show. Very good show. With another woman, with another, with another female. Ooh, girl power. <laughs> no we had, we had a threesome, like we do every week here. Absolutely. Oh, I, I, I would prefer the other with threesome. <laughs> <laughs> it's not happening. Yeah, that's the, uh, that's, that's the paid <laughs> people. <laughs> what was that? Okay. No, I am. 
I can see one. this. I can see this getting out of hand here. This is our yes. longest ever show. It's uh, it's been good Stop actually. It. We we uh, yeah, behave, Dee Dee. A brief look at the charts and some uh, some fire in the belly. <laughs> Yeah. Anything else? I think we've, uh, we've we've done charts. We've done uh, what BTC really is. Dicks and dildos. Anything else? Or aliens? We've covered. Aliens. The aliens are here. They've clearly taken over Didi's mind. <laughs> yeah. I but think it's guys, good. do yourself a favour. Check out check out Joe Rogan and check out um, yeah. that, that interview. It was really amazing. So. Yeah. Oh, before right. I forget, I'm Lisa, thinking. are you doing the copy trading on, on that, that platform? Oh, my uh, God. A number of people <laughs> asked me. <laughs> How many weeks left of COVID do we have? Lockdown? Possible. Possible? Possible. Yeah. Okay. I'll put a tweet out. If I get 500 likes on my tweet, I'll do copy trading. There you go. You heard it here. 500. Because uh, normally I don't get that many. So if I get 500 likes, I'll, you can copy trade me on Prime XBT. All right, people. That, that, would, that, uh, that, that, will be, that will be an easy one. I think we just buy 500 likes. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, look, I'd like to be able to copy trade you. I think, that, you know, obviously we've had a good discussion about what Bitcoin really is today, but also, you know, they're... Uh, okay, if, I, if I'm going to do... I want to make trade, some money in this space. I'm going to call it... What am I going to call it? So you've got to come up with a good name because they all have, you know, the real deal trader and, and all of this stuff. So are we, what are we going to be? Are we going to be girl power? <laughs> I'm going to have a really cool think, name. Yeah. <laughs> I think instead of instead of pussy cat, we make it copy cat. <laughs> Sounds okay. good. Yeah, and we'll make you a DD or send you a T-shirt. Uh, but yeah, look, I would love to be able to copy trade you. Um, then I can sort of get on with. I mean, we know how much time making this content involves, Lisa. Yeah. So it'll be easy to go. Look, yeah, you did a trade. <laughs> so I'm just gonna, I just do all the work. That's fine. Absolutely, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. But I'm sure that what you say. So how does it work? You get a a, a, a skim on the. the I, I do. I get twenty percent. So it's a profit share sort of thing. So depending on how much um, BTC you put in there, you can. It's anywhere from I think the exchange gets a, a portion as well, and then. Um, so the exchange, I think, starts at 20% and it goes, it, as you put more BTC in, they drop down to 5%. The trader always gets 20%. Mm. And, you know, you're sort of getting between 60 to 75% of okay. the profits, which, you know, is, is really good. So if you're making huge profits, like, um, you know, I, I've been playing on Prime XPT for quite some time and, in a trade I did there yesterday, I made five hundred percent. So maybe I should be copy trading. Well, you do, all right, exactly. So anyone watching this, there is a link below to Lisa's Twitter. Obviously, also to Dee Dee's videos and his channel. But go and like Lisa's tweet. Let's get her. I'll put a tweet out, and yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Instead so, of my trade of the week this week, I'll put this tweet out, and if I get five hundred likes, yeah, then I'll open a copy trading. So, ah, Sean, yeah. you are, Sean. you're locked up in Melbourne, Lee, so what better thing to do? True, true. Make some money. Because so, I've got nowhere so to spend it. I've got nowhere to travel. And then when this is all finished, I can travel the world again on my copy trading profits. Sean, so let's split, let's split the profits. So I will tweet the tweet with my Prime XBT uh, referral link because she already takes the cut out of the profits. <laughs> <laughs> Use my link to sign up. <laughs> Just my link to sign up, and then I get double profits. Yeah. All right, we're ra we're rounding out. And if you if you use my promotional code or DD's promotional code, when you put in three BTC, you get an additional. Um, if you're you're trading your own money, an additional fifty percent. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay. And if you subscribe to my channel, you go in the draw to win the Bitcoin sock that I've uh, <laughs> been putting out there for the last last few episodes. Well, I, I've got a really tricky Bitcoin, Bitcoin chain. 
So this was my sock and it's now my amazing, I saw online how to make an amazing face mask out of my sock. Hang on, it's not going on. So yeah, so there we go. Well, I've lost, I've lost the other Bitcoin sock, so maybe I can do that. So there, that's what you should be doing, original sock, face mask. Right, very good. <laughs> Nifty, yeah. So the heel becomes your chin. <laughs> right, guys, we're coming up on two hours, and I've got to timestamp this thing, which means it's not going to be out till uh, for for a long time. So, uh, shall we wrap it up? For, we should wrap uh, it up. We, we, yeah, we're we're digressing up. into Bitcoin socks and to face masks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you look very funny with this chin. <laughs> so let's talk. Bitcoin chain. <laughs> Beautiful one. Bling, bling. Yeah. No. I have the same, you know this. You do have the same. <laughs> no way. Yeah. It was given I, us, uh, I, to us by I Satoshi. I disown you both. I disown you both. There's oh. no more threesomes. You, you, don't like, you don't like a couple of dudes and gold chains, Lisa? Do you know what? We've talked so long. It's now dark outside. This is true. On that yeah. note, everyone, if you're still with us, uh, there's something wrong with you, but... Congratulations, you're in the Bitcoin <laughs> sock. <laughs> okay, always a great time talking with you two. You make yeah. my Mondays. We, oh, hope, uh, my we hope everyone watching has enjoyed and learned something. And uh, follow Lisa on Twitter. Get over there, like that tweet so we can copy Trader. And I'll put the link to Didi's channel below. He makes some fantastic videos, which are about 15 minutes in length, which are very... Probably about the right sort of length, Dee Dee. Like <laughs> length? <laughs> to keep oh, God, what he done? He's frozen with some dodgy look on his face. No, he's back. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. You want to say goodbye in Dutch, Dee Dee? Nurse. Doei. Hasta la vista, baby. Doei. Doei. Tot de volgende keer. Doei. Bye. Tot de volgende keer. <laughs> Bye. Bye. See you guys. See you next Monday. Bye. And we'll see you on Twitter. Bye now.